My name is Jeff Giru. Today we are going to be covering the basic concept of a network virtual appliance uh, as it relates to the Azure Cloud. So what I'll do over here is just give a little brief overview of an on-prem big IP device. In a traditional F5, there are multiple NICs, either a hardware on-prem device or a virtual. Today, we're going to be concentrating on a virtual device since as we move to the Azure component of the discussion, that will also be a virtual device. Um, but on the left here, we have a multi-NIC F5 device. This could be uh, a management port. There could be an external interface. There could be an internal interface. Now, within the on-prem, we're able to uh, put that through a hypervisor like VMware or other hypervisors. This allows these interfaces to accept multiple VLANs. As we get into the cloud difference, you'll see that's not possible within the network virtual appliances. So on the on-prem side, we're able to attach multiple VLANs. We can have one VLAN per if we want. But in this basic scenario, we have a management, we have some kind of outbound interface, and we have some kind of inbound, which if you want to draw some servers, this is going to go to our backend server VLAN. Each of these F5s have something called a self-IP. So if we write self-IP, right here. This is a way for the F5 to have an IP address in the network path to know how to get in and out of the F5. This is going to be used by uh, network switches and routers for gratuitous ARP and data paths to figure out how to get data from a client to the backend server and which way to route that. We do that via having self IPs on the F5, but we also have what's called a floater address. And this is our VIP address. This is our application address. So let's just put this here and we'll call this our VIP. This VIP will be either a static route or some kind of dynamic routing within the on-prem network and that allows the F5, whether it's a single F5 in this picture or an HA device, to properly float those addresses over and allow uh, communication to flow during a, a failover event. So now what we're going to do is move over to the Azure cloud. Let's just draw a little dash here. All right, next we're going to talk about how a network virtual appliance or an F5 device can work in the Azure cloud. In the cloud, what we have is the concept of a VNet. The VNet in a cloud holds all the subnets and all the components of networking uh, in a cloud environment. So I'm going to draw those out real quick so we can understand how a network virtual appliance can route and pass traffic in the cloud. So what we first want to talk about are the subnets. In the cloud, the subnets are individual unique address ranges. Those are going to be defaulting as their next hop to the Azure hypervisor gateway. Um, there is a default system route for each VNet. This allows the subnets within that VNet to all talk to each other. Um, the next concept we want to talk about is a network security group. This is our basic ACL for inbound and outbound. This is very important because as you are trying to pass traffic in and out, say it's port 80 or name your port, we want to make sure that our inbound and outbound uh, ACLs are open to allow that traffic. One other thing that we want to talk about is our IP configuration. How do we get IPs on the network virtual appliance that allow traffic to communicate within the cloud? This means, unlike an on-prem environment, we have to have an IP address sitting here configured on the network virtual appliance. Let's call it 10.1.1.10. And this also has to be configured within your Azure VM NIC. 
The NIC of this device also has to have 10.1.1.10, and this allows the Azure hypervisor to get that traffic and know which virtual appliance has that IP address for proper routing. These secondary IPs can be multiples. This is also going to apply to your, say you have a, a VIP front door for your F5. This will also be a secondary IP that somehow needs to map into the Azure cloud. All right, so next we're going to talk about uh, route tables and UDRs. And this is very important in case uh, server subnets, for example, want to route directly to a network virtual appliance. If you recall, the subnets and within a VNet have default routing and default system routing to use the Azure Cloud Gateway. So let's draw up RT for route table. And what you put inside of that are things called user-defined routes. If we draw up some servers over here, and we'll give the F5 another interface, 10.1.2.10. We'll call this internal. If, for example, the backend servers want to send all their default traffic to a next hop of a network virtual appliance, this doesn't work in a normal scenario because all the default system routes will go to the hypervisor. So we can accomplish this by adding a user-defined route. And what does that look like? If you're familiar with on-prem routing, what you do is take an address prefix. In this case, we want to send all traffic out. So we're going to send 0, .0, 0, 0, 0, .0, slash 0, next hop, 10, 1, 2, 10. This allows the backend servers to send all traffic to the F5, which can then be processed for security and traffic management out to the next hop. I hope that uh, helps you guys today. Uh, our next video series will cover HA via A API and HA via LB methods, so stay tuned and thanks for watching.